Hi, everybody. Welcome to Last Raps Baseball's Nippon Professional Baseball Report. Today, we're going to look at the Pacific and Central League results from Monday, June 22nd, and see how the import hitters and pitchers fared on that day's action. Also, we're going to take a look at the six-man rotations that the NPB uses, and we'll offer our thoughts on what are the pluses and the minuses of going to a six-man rotation, and if it could possibly work in the MLB. First of all, we're going to look at action in the Central League. In Tokyo, the Giants hosted the Hiroshima Carp at the Tokyo Dome, with Yamuri looking to extend its winning streak to four games, and they did just that. Gerardo Pereira was two for three at the dish, improving his season batting average to 583. At this pace, I wouldn't expect to see him batting in the seventh spot very much longer. Import pitcher Chris Johnson took the hill for the carp and struggled off the mound for five innings, giving up six hits, three runs, walking three, while fanning six batters. His 100 pitches through five innings was not as economical as he would have liked, and he only threw 62% strikes. Ruby De La Rosa came in, the former Diamondback, Arizona Diamondback, to record his second save for the Giants. Today's pitching matchup features uh, Aaron Curry for Hiroshima going against Christopher Mercedes of the Yamuri Giants. Our second matchup in the Central Division had the Hanshin Tigers in South Tokyo taking on the Swallows, looking to get their first win of the season. The Tigers pounded out 12 hits en route to a 4-1 victory as Jeffrey Marte was 3-for-4 with a homer and two RBIs. Justin Bohr continued his Chris Davis-like start to the season, again by going 0-for-4 with a strikeout. Bohr has now extended his hitless streak to 16 consecutive at-bats. Former Baltimore Oriole Gabriel Yanoa is no stranger to losing after going 1-9 with the Baltimore Orioles last season, and he dropped his opening start for Yakult, allowing nine hits and four runs over five innings. The pitching matchup for today's games features Joe Gunkel going for the Hanshin Tigers, and Albert Suarez takes to the hill for the Yakult Swallows. The final Central League matchup featured the Yokohama Dana Bay Stars at home to the Chinichi Dragons. For Yokohama, Tyler Austin made his first start of the season going 4 for 4 with an RBI. Jose Lopez added a hit, an RBI, and a walk in his four plate appearances. For the Chinichi Dragons, Dayan Visayedo had one hit and four trips to the plate. Today's matchup features for Chinichi uh, Takumi Yamamoto going up against Yokohama starter Soichi Ino. Over in the Pacific League, the Cebu Lions even their season record at 2-2, two two, uh, defeating the Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks 11-3. Corey Spangenberg broke a 13-at-bat hitless streak by going 4-5 for five with a home run, 4 RBIs, and scoring 3 runs. Spangenberg accounted for more than half of the 11 runs that, uh, that Cebu put on the board. This was at the expense of Fukuoka starter Matt Moore, who was making his season debut after a season-ending knee injury last year suffered in his second start with the Detroit Tigers. Moore lasted just four innings, giving up seven hits, walking three, and fanning four. Today's pitching matchup for Fukuoka is Shota Ishikawa going up against Cebu's Tetsuya Imai. Our second matchup in the Pacific League featured the Chibalote Marines and the Oryx Buffaloes. Andrew Alberts of North Battleford, Saskatchewan, Canada, the only Canadian in the league, went to the mound for Oryx. Alberts struggled in his first inning, allowing three runs, including two home runs, but then settled down and ended up going six innings. For Oryx, Adam Jones homered for the first time this year in the NPB, and Adderlin Rodriguez went one for five. For Chiba, Brandon Laird had one of those first 20 home runs off of Albers, and he went two for four with a bomb. Unfortunately, Oryx Buffalo's Brandon Dixon, making his third appearance in four outings, was tagged with the loss after allowing two runs and only recording one out in the ninth inning. 
they got walked off. Today's pitching matchup for Oryx is Kohei Suzuki going up against Chiba's Kazuya Ojima. The final game of the Pacific League saw Rakuten shut out the Nippon Ham Fighters 4 0. It was the second time this season that the Ham Fighters have been shut out in four games. Stefan Romero stayed hot for Rakuten by going two for three with a homer and a walk. For the fighters, Nick Martinez made his season debut, and the former Texas Rangers surrendered four runs on eight hits, walking two, and striking out seven in five innings of work. Taiwanese outfielder Wang Po Jung was 0 for 4 and is now 1 for 13 early on in the campaign. The next starters for today's games for the Nippon Ham Fighters will be Ryusi Kawanu, and for Rakuten, it's going to be Hideki Ojima. For those of you who are new to Japanese baseball, the Japanese use a six man rotation. And uh, what that means is, is that traditionally in the NPB, games are scheduled from Tuesday to Sunday, uh, with Monday being an off day. And so each day, there's a different starter. In North America, it, currently, most teams use a five-man rotation. And uh, sometimes in the odd time, they'll use short rest where they might pitch a guy uh, or maybe use a four-man rotation uh, when there's extra days off early in the season. Um, so the question comes in, why use a six-man rotation and why is it better? And so for me, there's, there's three reasons that I can pretty much think about. And that is, one, is it can manage the innings pitched by the pitcher. Uh, two, it can help develop more starters over that length of time. And the third thing is, is some people believe it reduces injuries. Well, I'm going to talk a little bit about my pros and my cons with regards to maybe some of those overall reasons. Um, but first of all, the first one is is a, a pro, and the pro is is uh, they believe it lowers the risk of, of injury, and obviously it's for the health benefits. And, um, you know, possibly by giving that guy the extra day's rest, some people really believe that that will make a difference and be able to stretch the pitcher out and be able to preserve the length of his career. Obviously, in Major League Baseball in the last number of years, there has been a major spike in elbow injuries. And so possibly exploring a six-man rotation, it may change if, um, uh, you know, they use the six. Maybe we see a reduction in the, um, in the injuries. I guess we're not going to know until it actually is employed. The other piece is, is when you look at the Japanese league, there are guys who throw hard. There's no doubt about it. But when you look at the North Americans and you look at the Latin players, the consistency and the power arms, the Dominicans, the Venezuelans, the Cubans, uh, how many guys are throwing mid-upper 90s now uh, and the stress and the strain. When you're watching the Japanese league or for that matter even the Korean league, the KBO, which is on TV right now, uh, there are some guys that are upper 80s, low 90s. They're not putting the stress on the body uh, that you see some of the uh, other guys that are bigger, stronger, that throw harder. Uh, another pro is is developing more arms. And in Japan, there's really two levels of ball. They have the NPB, at least at the professional level, and then they have their farm team or development team. So each roster in Japan has 70 players on the roster. And of course, on game days this year, uh, 31 are on the game day sheet. And then I think they reduce it to 28 um, when it actually comes down to, to playing in the game. And so um, at, the, uh, at the minor league level, I can understand something like that where you're, you're doing this to try to develop your starters. And I'll use an example. Uh, the Houston Astros a number of years ago when Bob Cluck was their pitching coordinator, what they used in the minor leagues was something called the piggyback system. And the piggyback system was for them to develop starters. And so they were having problems, and of course they were trying to get guys to develop quicker. So what they would do is they would um, uh, do something like this, where they would have a starter go out and go 75 innings. They would have guys that would be designated as relievers, that if the, uh, if the pitcher threw 75 pitches, then what they would do is they would bridge that, complete that inning with another, uh, another pitcher. They'd bring another starter in and take him to 75 pitches. 
And then they would bring in guys who were designated as relievers to complete the game. That's one way in which it could be a piggyback system can be done. You're basically taking two starters and, and starting them in the same game and taking them to a max of 75 pitches. Well, that's a route that you can use in the minor leagues, but unfortunately in Japan, you've only got top flight, which is their equivalent of the MLB, and then of course you've got the bottom flight, which is their farm team, and then there's nothing else after that. Major League Baseball, you've got triple A, double A, high A, low A, long season, short A, rookie ball, and you may have multiple teams in rookie ball. So there could be six or seven layers of professional baseball below the major league level. Now, the last piece is, is that also a pro is it could take some pitchers longer to recover. So some of you who are a little bit older and feel that, hey, oh, you know, my shoulder's a bit sore, my lat's a bit tight, or uh, my forearm's a bit stiff, that extra day can actually help you in the recovery process. You don't have to have to hurry back. Now, the two cons that I see. Well, first of all, an item number one, in a 120-game season, that means right now this year in the NPB, you're only getting 20 starts using a six-man rotation. If you use the five-man rotation, that means you're going to get yourself uh, 24 starts. And if they went to a four-man rotation, you'd get 30 starts. So my question is, don't you always want to try to send out your best guy as much as you possibly can throughout the year to give you that competitive advantage to win games? So I don't know about a four-man rotation anymore, but certainly a five-man rotation is something that I could still see in the uh, in the Japanese league because I'd want to send my best guy out every every fourth or fifth day as opposed to every every six days. Now the other one to that is is the recovery time. And recovery time, for me, I equate this to lifting weights. And so when you lift weights, there's different patterns that people will use once they get out of a cyclical routine. They may go in and do chest, back, and tries on a Monday. And then they might go back and do legs, shoulders, and biceps on Tuesday. Wednesday would be a rest day. And then Thursday, they would repeat what they did on day one, which would be chest, back, and tries. So they have two days of rest in between. And then on the Friday, they would do legs, shoulders, and buys. Again, two days of rest. And then take the weekend off, which is now two days of extra rest. So now you have three days of rest. And so then you would start that cycle over again. Some routines, they break up the body parts over a three-day routine. And I realized that lifting weights and pitching is two different animals. But the recovery process is still the same thing. So my thoughts on it are this, is everybody does recover a little bit differently. Some guys have fast twitch muscles, some guys have less fast twitch muscles. Some guys are bigger and stronger, some guys are less. Some guys have more flexibility, some guys don't. Everybody's body is a little bit different. And so with that being said, it's to me it's still a con uh, that if you're giving six days between starts, that may be way too much time. They should be able to recover a lot quicker than the six days that you're having them to recover. That's my thoughts on the six-man rotation. I'd like to hear what your thoughts are. And please feel free to put them in the comment section below. Or if you have a question about the six-man rotation, I'd love to hear it because I think it's fascinating that they're, they're using this. And, um, you know, I guess maybe why a major league team uh, in North America wouldn't consider using it um, and uh, some of the reasons that, that could be maybe are the ones that I've offered or maybe something I didn't explore. So once again, everybody, I want to thank you for watching the DePond Professional Baseball Report. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button, and if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. But we'll be back here again tomorrow, and again, we're focusing on the import players to the NPB. We thank you for watching, and have a great day. Uh -huh.